Hi, I'm Art Bergeron, and welcome to this episode of Bergeron Briefs. These are the 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 uh, the short presentations that supplement the sum the, the the seminars that I've been doing every month. And for my seminar regarding uh, Frank and Mary, and therefore you, if you are in your 60s, we talked about the fact that that's the time where you really want to be thinking about whether you want to be going on Medicare versus staying on your own health insurance. That I told you, I said, the great expert on this is not me and is not your lawyer or your accountant. It's these people. Um, Janice Long and Holly Richardson are both at the Hudson Senior Center. And I wanted to tell it, and they're both certified shine counselors. And I wanted them to start off in like a minute, talk a little bit about what that means, right? And, and this is what they're trained to be knowing how to, and what they have the technical tools to be able to talk to you about. Ha Holly and Janice, thank you so much. I know you know that you're taking out time from your day job here to be here. But could you just talk, just talk a little bit about what, what Shine is and, and the training that, that you get and, and, and therefore the reason why every senior should know you folks? You want to go first, Holly? Okay, so SHINE stands for serving the health insurance needs of everyone on Medicare. So it's not just seniors, it could be people who are under age 65, but they've been deemed disabled by Social Security, and so now they're eligible for Medicare based on their disability status. Um, so what we do is we go over their, <clears throat> their options for Medicare, compare pricing, and see what would be the best coverage for them based on their needs. Um, we also can compare it to what they're getting in terms of their employer plan, you know, and, and just comparing at least the price of what they'd be getting. You know, if you have a high deductible on your insurance plan at work, you know, you have to pay a certain amount of money before you even get any coverage compared to what Medicare might be. It might be better off going on to Medicare as opposed to staying on your employer plan. Um, but we can predict whether or not people are going to go into the donut hole with their prescriptions. Um, and, you know, we can also screen them for any financial assistance programs that might be offered that they're eligible for through state and federal programs. So, so they know a ton of stuff and their, their goal when you walk in the door is not to just answer your question. They're genuinely, they do these jobs because they want to be talking to seniors. They like seniors, right? They want, if, if you walk in thinking you have this issue, they're going to also tell you, well, you know, you may want to think about these other issues. You may be eligible for these other things. It's really, really important. So as well, it relates, of, oh. Janice, no, please. Well, most of the time when people come in, Medicare is so confusing. You know, it's, it's, they just need somebody to help them, to guide them through that Medicare maze. It's just so confusing. And by the way, Janice Long is the person who helped my wife and I through this Medicare maze because we went in thinking mm. that we really wanted to qualify for Medicare because you know the cost is very low and blah blah blah, blah versus even though I'm still working. Um, but it turned out that wasn't the best answer, right? And so we and so we haven't yet, even though we're on social security. So could you just kind of could the two of you just kind of talk to those kinds of issues? Because you see a lot of people. And so you've seen different kinds of situations. Can you just kind of talk to situations where you're 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 talking to people who and 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 advising them and some and sometimes saying, oh no, Medicare is really the right thing for you, and sometimes it really isn't. And and Holly, I just want to go back back to you know to your example. I, I I as a as a person who knows nothing, you know, about this stuff, would would say, well, you know, I'm I'm on I'm on. Um, I'm, I'm working and I'm on a, on a, on a group plan, you know, but, you know, I know Medicare that, you know, the costs are going to be really low and therefore I should just be going to Medicare. And I think that's an assumption that a lot of people make, right? Mm -hmm. So can you just kind of talk that out in, in terms of how they should think about the numbers and, 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 and what the options are? Mm -hmm. Oh, so, and, 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 um, and, everyone and, assumes and, that Medicare is the same price for everyone. And that is not the case. Um, if you are in a higher income bracket, you could be potentially assessed a higher monthly premium for Medicare Part B, as well as a Part D adjustment for your prescriptions. So it might be the standard premium for someone else, but if you have a higher income, then you could be paying a couple hundred dollars more for just your baseline Part B premium price. And so that can really affect it. 
Um, not only that, but your prescription prices can be a complete game changer as well. You know, if you're on really expensive medications, you're on specialty medications. Um, sometimes people are on manufacturing programs too when they get assistance. A lot of times when you make that transition to a federal program like Medicare, you're no longer eligible for the manufacturing programs because you can't be on a federal program and have that. Can you, so can you, can not Molly, only- yeah. Molly, can you just speak to what a manufacturing program m means? So that would be, um, you know, sometimes the manufacturer of the actual medication has financial assistance programs or sometimes there's foundations that provide monetary assistance for people with their drug costs if they are, you know, having difficulties paying for their prescription. Um, so that could potentially be affected. But not only that, just the price of the medications can drastically change the outcome of people's decisions. I've had clients that they're better off financially going on to Medicare based on the health insurance aspect, but their medication costs would be hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. And so for them, it completely altered their decision and they were better off staying on their employer plan just because of the price of the medications. And, and so, of course, you know, when, when you're talking about the, the you know, the drug plans, mm -hmm. you're talking about the fact that there's a whole variety of drug plans that are available if you're on for Medicare D. Mm -hmm. But you, but you have all that information, right? You, you, yeah. you, you, you have the, you, you know, you're connected with the, with the computer programs and blah, blah, so you can really help people just on the drug side, kind of analyze what mm -hmm. the ideal plan is. Yeah. And, and then as you're, you're saying that, that, but that would also allow these people coming in to compare what, what their best plan is on Medicare yeah. to what they're now doing with their, with their employer plan. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most important thing. We give them the information so that they can make that decision. Like Holly said, you could be a higher income person, um, you know, and have that Irma. You, you'll have to pay Irma, that extra. Ir Irma, what is Irma? Irma is the um, income related monthly adjustment amount. So you could be, like Holly said, you could pay a little bit more for your part B. And, and, is, and is Irma the one, when I, when I think about the, 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 the actual payment, I think about this, I always say to this client, oh, what is your Medic Medicare B payment, right? And I always think of that as kind of a standard payment per month. And I always think of it as being around like $120 or $130. $164.90 is That's the standard is premium for 2023. And, and can, you, can you give people a, just an order of magnitude number, you know, once again, without going through income categories, mm -hmm. how high that might be, depending on if you're a higher income individual? Um, I want to say it can be over $500. Um, I think it could be, yeah, it could go up close to $500. Yeah. So, could, so once again, I mean, folks, so, so think about that. So it's 160 times 12, right? Is about a, about $1,500 a month versus 500 times 12, that's 6,000, excuse me, a, time, a year. For his 500 times 12, that's six thousand dollars a year. That's yeah, that, that that's the difference. That would be if you're extremely, yeah. extremely yes. high yes. income. Um, you so know, so I think the next one up would be 258.90. Oh, but it is a significant jump. Yeah, that's but a there's jump. a range. That's a big jump. Yeah, there's yeah. a range that's a big based jump. on so one thing too is that it goes based on your taxes from the previous year. So like or for a certain time period. So for 2023, it is actually based on, sorry, I'm gonna get my chart. Yeah. So for 2023, it's actually based on the 2021 tax return. Right. So yeah. sometime, go so ahead. it can go based on like a higher income, especially if now you're retired and let's say that you were working a lot in preparation of retiring, sometimes that happens. And then people don't realize that when they were preparing for retirement, that their income that they were making and they were saving, they were trying to work extra, could potentially affect what their premium is a couple of years down the road. If for some reason you are assessed a higher monthly premium though, um, you could potentially appeal it to social security. We don't do anything with the appeals process. It has to go directly through social security itself. But you can always appeal that if you are assessed a higher monthly premium and then you think that that's not accurate. 
because maybe let's say that you were working full time and now you're fully retired and you're only collecting social security. So there is a change in your income. You can always take an appeal that to social security and they would ultimately make the determination. I see. And all of that goes through the social security process, yeah. not, through, not through like Medicare, not through Medicare. It goes through social security. And, and once, and once again, so folks, so as Holly was just mm -hmm. saying, well, let me check my chart just to find this out. So you're not going to have that chart, right? They have that chart. And, the, and, and this is, this is, this is the government. It changes all the time. You know, I will often be doing in a different context. I'll be talking to folks about mass health. And oh, we're trying to calculate how something is going to happen. And I say, well, you know, and this is the limit to your assets. And I just give them a number and I say, don't ask me how that happens. It comes from the sky. That's the point. It come, these things come from the federal sky, right? And, and they change all the time. And there's no way that you're going to be able to keep track of all that stuff, right? So you need somebody who's going to be looking at that like all the time. So I guess th this relates to, I think, something the two of you have really taught me, which is, this this the this question of whether you shift to, to Medicare or when really needs to be looked at every year because your your income maybe you know your income may be changing the the benefits that you just talked about may, may be changing the Part D amount may be changing and and since it's Medicare well yeah it's true with everything now you can always apply so do you have people kind of coming in just when they're just thinking about applying for Medicare the first time, or do, the, do you have kind of regulars? That... No, we have certainly have regulars, especially during the open enrollment period. So um, open enrollments be between October 15th and December 7th, that is when people can make changes to their insurance and have their insurance reviewed for the following year. And I tell people, regardless of whether or not I saw you, Two months ago, two years ago, you should always have your stuff reviewed because your needs change, your medications change, the prescription coverage on a plan can change. Um, and so that's why we tell people to have it reviewed because it can change pretty significantly. You know, just for example, like a tier of a medication can change from a tier three to a tier four making your prescription price drop jump from $50 a month to over $200 for a one month supply of your medication. And that's why you really do need to have it reviewed every single year. Now, can you also kind of, Janice, can you go to this? There was, there was something that I remember you raised when we first talked about this. And I, I, I learned something new every time I talked to you, but you had talked about mm -hmm. the fact that from, that from the employer's side, if this particular employee is is older and is part of the employer's health insurance plan, right, that may be affecting the employer's health insurance premium that they're paying for the for the benefit of the of these workers, and so it may be that 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 the that the that the employer benefits by having the employee shift to math to 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 Medicare, right. And therefore, may want you may want to talk to your employer to the extent that 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 you're that you're kind of thinking about this, right? Um, to see to see if that can 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 be can affect your compensation from that employer, because you may be saving your employer money by moving to Medicare. Is that a fair is that a fair summary? Yeah. Because no one, no one I'd never I'd never heard of that before. It makes perfect sense, right? Right. Holly, you, can you talk about that, the, the employees and the numbers? Oh, so I wouldn't say, I mean, that would really be more so for when you're <clears> going <throat> to retire and whether or not you need to be on Medicare, not necessarily if you're just looking to take and save your employer money. That's, it's more so the numbers in regards to when you're looking to retire. I so, see. and if you're still covered. So if you work for a smaller company, mm -hmm. It's generally less than 20 employees, then generally Medicare is primary insurance to your employer plan. So if you work for a larger company, they are supposed to be offering the same health insurance coverage for someone who should be on Medicare as a standard employee. So that's for larger companies. So with larger companies, Medicare would be a secondary insurance to your employer. So that's why people generally delay their Medicare and they just keep their employer plan. However, if you work for a smaller company, 
and Medicare should be primary insurance to the employer plan, and let's say that you don't take it, your employer plan, the employer group health plan, could potentially deny claims and then request funds that were paid inappropriately. So the issue, if you delay your enrollment into Medicare and you are still working, wouldn't would you wouldn't be looking at issues of penalties for Medicare because you are still working, you are covered. The issue would be, okay, should you have taken this and you didn't, and now the employer plan saying, well, there should have been a primary payer prior to us. And so then it would be an issue of, of, of payment. Wow. And, and once again, who would know that, you know, until you're in that hole, until you're, you've actually filed a claim and now you're getting bounced around in terms of, who, of who's going to be paying the bill. So the, the message, the message here, folks, is you, you in, in many places, you will find people who are like them. You will never find people who are as good as them, or I shouldn't say that, but better than them ever, right? But you may find some very good people in your town, right, uh, and whom you can talk to about this. And I should also mention, as I think Janice and, and, and Holly have told me, all senior centers are for all seniors, right? All senior centers are for all seniors. So, so I don't want to say you want to be shopping around, but but if if the if the if if Shine simply isn't available in your community, you know you 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 can you certainly should be talking to other folks. This is a really important program. These senior center people are just terrific. Their point in life is to make your life better. So thank you very very much, Janice. Thank you, Holly. Thank I really you. appreciate awesome. you know taking some time from your day job to do this, folks. I hope you enjoy this. Um, and, and, and once again, note to file. If you've got any questions, go call your senior center and talk to the Shine Council. Thank you.